Good afternoon and welcome to another Angry Bulletin. Before I go any further, I'd like to encourage all of you to support the incredible work of Hayes Gray Art. And no, I'm not going to be playing any more of the incredible audio from this clip. If you want to check this out in all of its glory, well, you need to follow the link in the description that will take you to Hayes Gray Art's YouTube channel. All that having been said, though, this, in my opinion, is the most impressive and accurate animation that we have for Neutron, at least thus far. Yes, we're talking about the most technologically sophisticated rocket that will be emerging in 2025. Indeed, the most technologically sophisticated rocket that's scheduled to be launched in the foreseeable future. Now, those of you who are big SpaceX and Starship fans are probably chomping at the bit right now to tell me how wrong I am. And I'm not saying that Neutron is the best rocket that's coming out in 2025. I'm not saying that being the most technologically sophisticated means that it's going to be the best or the most competitive, but you're going to see in just a moment just how amazingly innovative Neutron is and how many different types of cutting edge, bleeding edge technologies actually that Rocket Lab is going to employ in the creation and launch of this incredible reusable launch vehicle and how because of this technology this rocket is going to be able to compete in ways that no other SpaceX competitor has been able to do in the past. All of this and more coming at you on the Angry Astronaut right now. Before we get going, I would like to thank all of these incredible people that decided to support me on Patreon in the month of October. Patrick DeJoseph, also the incredible Supax, who's actually been supporting me for quite some time. In addition, we also have David Fields and Spig and Electro Hawk and Simon Parkin, Aaron Cloney, Gene Janning, Christopher Jones, Raz Iraz Charles, maybe mispronouncing some of these once again, I apologize, Barry McMillan, Arnaud Autret, RG33K, and finally Joachim Ravel. Thank you so much for your generous support, and for those of you that would like to join these folks and get access to a growing library of exclusive Patreon titles that I have, well, all you have to do is go to the description and you can join for as little as $3 a month. Okay, enough discussion of that. What are we looking at right now? Well, we're looking at the incredible Archimedes engine that's currently being tested by Rocket Lab. As a matter of fact, it's entering its final stages of testing. Quite a lot has been accomplished in Neutron's development up to this point. In 2022, the molds and tooling for Neutron were completed. Then full-scale prototype hardware for Archimedes and Neutron were made. Then the Archimedes test complex that you're looking at right now for NASA's Stennis Space Center. That was opened in November of 2022, followed by the pre-burner hot fire test of Archimedes for the first time. Then in early 2023, you had engine ignition testing on development hardware. Then test stand infrastructure was completed for the Neutron Stage 2 tank. Then the final Stage 2 build was completed, and that was in August of 2023, followed by the Stage 2 structural and cryogenic testing. The first Archimedes development engine was built, and then finally the Archimedes engine hot fire for this development engine was carried out, followed by the testing of all avionics and communications devices with critical onboard software and GNC algorithms. Now, the flight mechanism mechanisms test program is currently in progress as 
as is the stage one build and once the stage one build is complete then you just have a stage two and stage one static fire integrate the rocket carry out a wet dress rehearsal and carry out a launch in 2025 rocket lab is moving at warp speed on developing this rocket very much the same as their competitors and this is because peter beck realized years ago that it wouldn't be too long before small launch providers launching cubesats payloads of a few hundred kilograms to low earth orbit those sorts of launch providers would be a dime a dozen and indeed there are quite a few that are about to launch their first rocket some of them actually already have such as firefly which means that it was critical for rocket lab to graduate to at least a medium lift rocket in order to be able to compete on a wider variety of cargoes including human rated missions which is what neutron is designed to carry out but what makes neutron so unusual how is it any different than Falcon 9, which reuses the first stage in the same way that Neutron does. Well, there's a very important difference, and that is its construction, the way that this rocket is built. It will be the first medium lift rocket, really the first rocket beyond a tiny micro launcher that is constructed almost entirely with 3D printing methods. There are other companies trying to pursue this goal, but Rocket Lab is the first to actually carry it out. And they're doing it with the largest 3D printer on the planet. This beast is fully automated. It's 12 meters tall. It weighs 90 metric tons. And you need something this large in order to build a rocket the size of Neutron. It's capable of manufacturing 28 meter long interstage and fairing components for the rocket a 7 meter diameter first stage and a 5 meter diameter second stage which by the way is a larger fairing than either Falcon 9 or Falcon Heavy has in the equivalent size of a Vulcan Centaur fairing so in other words capable of handling lots of different payloads that are designed for 5 meter diameter fairings that's kind of the universal size for many of the payloads that are going to be going up to low earth orbit and elsewhere in the future this incredible machine is capable of laying down continuous carbon fiber composite structures at a rate of 100 meters per minute. It also has a fully automated real-time inspection system that hunts for minuscule defects throughout the carbon composite and alerts the machine operator of any issues before the machine begins laying down the next layer, providing additional assurance that these critical structures of the launch vehicle meet with Rocket Lab standards required for reusable neutron launches. This is the anti-Starship. Starship is designed with a stainless steel construction because it's simpler, because it's less expensive, and because you can put it together with conventional welding techniques. This is utilizing far more sophisticated construction techniques, and the reason it has an advantage is because it's so much lighter weight than anything that SpaceX or for that matter any other launch provider is using at the moment and lighter weight means heavier payloads with less thrust let's go ahead and put this into numbers Starship has over 11 times the thrust that Neutron does with its 33 Raptor engines and the unbelievable 16 million plus pounds worth of thrust that this can generate. It is an absolute behemoth. However, it can only lift about seven and a half times the payload. 11 times the thrust for seven and a half times the result. Why is this? Well, it's because of a couple of factors. Number one, of course, as you can guess, is the weight. Stainless steel is just a lot heavier than carbon fiber. In addition to that, SpaceX has removed a number of components from the first stage in order to make it even lighter weight. For example, 
landing legs, which is the whole reason that you have this tower capture system in the first place. However, that being the case, you need this kind of capture system deployed in order to retrieve the stage, which means no downrange recovery on a barge. And that significantly reduces the amount of payload you can carry to orbit because your first stage has to return all the way to the launch site and not necessarily to a barge further downrange as Neutron can do. Neutron, utilizing a more conventional landing system with only landing legs very much like Falcon 9, can deploy 13 metric tons as long as it's being recovered on a barge. And there's another advantage as well when we're talking about interplanetary cargoes. Anyone familiar with Neutron knows about the clamshell fairing deployment system on this rocket. The fairing does not detach from the rocket, instead it opens up like a rocket from a James Bond movie and deploys the upper stage. There are reasons why this is so advantageous. It's not just about getting your fairing back, it's also about protecting the second stage as well as the cargo. Because the second stage is shrouded from the effects of atmospheric abuse during the ascent. Normally, you have to have a resilient second stage that can handle an ascent through a dense atmosphere, but now you don't with this type of system. This second stage is the lightest in the industry by far. Number one, because it's made out of carbon fiber, and number two, because you don't have to build it to endure atmospheric abuse. In other words, it's protected by the fairing, meaning that the second stage not having to push much mass aside from the payload can deliver a heavier cargo to an interplanetary destination than many rockets of a similar size. And this is the reason that Neutron looks like it's going to get the contract for a Mars sample return mission to the Red Planet. Originally, this contract was supposed to run about $4 billion, but has ballooned to about $10 billion, which meant that NASA was on the cusp of canceling the entire operation, which would be very tragic because one of Perseverance's primary missions was to gather up samples that would later be recovered and brought back to Earth to determine not only whether or not not there's life on the red planet, but what kind of life might exist in the Martian regolith. But now that Rocket Lab has put forward a proposal that can handle this job for $2 billion, in other words, 50% less than the original contract value, that situation has completely changed and the way that Rocket Lab can handle all of this is by assigning one Neutron to deliver the recovery vehicle as you've watched here and a second Neutron to deploy an orbiting vehicle to rendezvous with the recovery craft. Those two Neutron rockets plus the vehicles, the landers, everything combined amounts to a $2 billion price tag, which is going to be a lot less expensive and also a lot less complicated than anybody else's solution, including SpaceX, who's proposing a Starship recovery solution, which would require at least 10 refueling missions, 11 launches as opposed to two. Now a Neutron, or a rocket of similar size, shouldn't be able to deploy a full-scale lander to the Martian surface at all. It's too heavy for a rocket the size of Neutron. But since the second stage of Neutron is so lightweight, and since the Archimedes engine that powers it has a similar amount of thrust to a Merlin engine on a Falcon 9, you're getting far greater performance from that second stage than you would get from a Falcon 9 launch. You would need a Falcon Heavy, in other words, two Falcon Heavies, in order to accomplish the same thing. And 
Also, Falcon Heavies, with their small fairings, couldn't handle the same size of landing craft that a Neutron can, meaning that SpaceX has to go with a Starship solution in order to compete, and as we have seen, a Starship solution is just far too complicated, regardless of the price. So Neutron is going to be able to compete for a wide variety of different contracts, but of course, there are potential drawbacks. We have seen how resilient Starship is. We have seen how good stainless steel holds up during re-entry, during landing, during the abuse that a rocket takes during day-to-day -day operations. That could mean that stainless steel will survive better through reusability than carbon fiber will. On the other side of the equation though, because Neutron is so lightweight, Peter Beck is not planning to run the Archimedes engines at full power or at 110% power as many engines commonly do. Instead, he's going to run the engines at about 85 to 90%, which you can get away with because Neutron is so lightweight. And the rationale is if you're not pushing these engines for all their worth, they're going to hold up better, they're going to require less maintenance, and they're going to survive more reuses. Remains to be seen as to whether or not that actually works in practice, but still, I think it's a pretty good philosophy, and it's a philosophy that simply couldn't be applied if you didn't have a rocket that was so lightweight being manufactured by such bleeding-edge technology. So is the Rocket Lab Neutron the most technologically sophisticated rocket coming out in the near future? Yes, indeed it is. Does that mean that it's the best rocket? Rocket. Well, we don't know yet because we still have a lot of work to do. Rather, Rocket Lab and Peter Beck has a lot of work to do on this amazing machine before it actually takes flight. And until it actually does take flight, all of this is purely theoretical. Thank you very much for watching. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. Again, please consider supporting this channel. Check the description for ways to do that. And as always, stay angry about space.